that is going to make all of the difference to your life. Now, I think I know why gratitude is so frequently overlooked. For one thing, we Christians, we're painfully aware of our needs, aren't we? We, we know how, how we fall short of the glory of God. We know how many ways we need to be lifted up and improved. We feel the hurt of our family problems. We feel the pain of our health problems. We struggle with work and money and time. We know our character flaws and shortcomings. So it's no surprise that when we kneel down to pray, we say, oh Lord, you know how many things I need. It's this and this and this and this, all these things I need. We know our needs so well. They affect us so, so intimately. We feel so powerless and we know that God has power and he is powerful and so we spend our time telling God what we want. Another thing that people don't realize is the power that gratitude has. Maybe another reason why we forget to, to say thank you as much as we have to. Gratitude has tremendous power. If you didn't know anything about bread, and I, and, and I held out my hand with a little teaspoon of that beige powder, and I said, okay, that tiny little bit of, of fluffy powder there, that makes the difference between wonderful, delicious bread and something you're going to have to throw in the rubbish bin. You might say, no, really? That little, that little bit of stuff, that makes the difference? Yeah, it does. Similarly, gratitude is a lot more powerful than most people think. Gratitude, you see, has been downgraded to courtesy. And courtesy is outer polish, not inner conviction. Courtesy is something you do to be nice, not deep spiritual discipline. And I'm talking about gratitude as a deep spiritual discipline, purposeful, intentional, specific gratitude for your blessings. You polite people send thank you notes, don't they? Go to somebody's house for dinner, you write a little note, say thank you so much for inviting us over. It was delicious and your house is beautiful. And it's just such a pleasure to spend the evening with you. The note really doesn't have to say a whole lot. It's a courtesy. Thank you, as we say to one another, is a nice touch, but most of the time it's something just to mark the end of a transaction. You say to the clerk after you finish buying something, you say thank you. I don't really feel very thankful, but it's, it says, well, my work with you is done now. Thank you. I'm going to walk away. How many people, I wonder, live lives of frustration because we never intentionally exercise the discipline of searching our lives for our blessings and feeling grateful. I've got four lessons for you tonight. Four, four specific lessons that we're going to go through. Number one, lesson number one. Gratitude prevents us from taking our blessings for granted. Gratitude keeps us from taking our blessings for granted. I heard once of a couple who had given a sizable contribution to the church in honor of their son who had been killed in military service. When the announcement of this wonderful contribution was made in the church, another woman in the pew turned to her husband and whispered, let's give the same amount in honor of our son. And the husband looked at her and he said, what are you talking about? Our son hasn't been killed. She said, that's just the point, isn't it? It's so easy to let our blessings just slide by. We move on from one need to the next need, the next problem, and we can completely forget the blessings. Years ago, I was talking to a school principal. I called up a school principal, and I took him out to lunch one day, and he just looked so tired. And I said, what's the matter? He says, you know, Pastor, he said, everybody has a complaint. Just this week, I got a dozen letters from parents who were upset about something that happened in the school or angry at a teacher or angry at me. I just get letters and calls from complaints all the time. I said, but surely some people are happy with what's happening at the school. He says, well, as a matter of fact, I think almost everybody is happy with what's happening at the school. But those people I never hear from. I only hear from the people who are complaining. 
Anyone who works with people will tell you the same thing. Jesus got the proportion about right when he said, were there not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? One in ten is as enthusiastic with gratitude as they are with complaints. So the blessings just slide by. We are so regardless of our blessings that we fail even sometimes to enjoy our own achievements. I have a friend who's just an extraordinary mus musician. Just a, a professional, wonderful pro professional musician. Everything he, he plays is just perfect. And I said to him one time, I said, that must feel so good. You know, if I was a musician like that, I would just enjoy it so much. It must be so satisfying to be able to play your instrument so perfectly and so nicely. He said, you know what, Pastor? He said, I rarely think about it, except when I feel critical of what I've done. And I thought, what tragic ingratitude. To not even be able to enjoy the talents that God has bestowed upon you because you're too self-critical. Here's a parable from a great American preacher, Henry Ward Beecher, one of the great, great American writers and speakers. If one should give me a dish of sand, and tell me there were particles of iron in it. I might look for them with my eyes and search for them with my clumsy fingers and be unable to detect them. But let me take a magnet and sweep through it, and now would it draw to itself the almost invisible particles by the mere power of attraction. The unthankful heart, like my finger in the sand, discovers no miracles. But let the thankful heart sweep through the day, and as the magnet finds the iron, so it will find in every hour some heavenly blessings. People find what they're looking for. So that leads to lesson number two. Gratitude is the only way to see our prayers answered. Now hear me, church. Gratitude is the way we see our prayers answered. Generally, our prayers, as I said, are about our needs. But how many people, when they have devoted hours, weeks, sometimes years, some of you have been praying for things for years and years, the same thing. How many of us, when we have prayed for so long for something, actually sweep the magnet of gratitude through our lives to see what God has done? Suppose you walk into a shop one day, and you looked around, and all the shelves, there was almost nothing there. And, and, and the clerk says, what do you want? What are you looking for? And, and you say, well, I, I came in here looking for a, a, a sweater. I want to buy a sweater for my wife. And the merchant says, well, I, I'd like to have one to sell you, but as you see, I don't have any sweaters on the shelf. Have you tried to get sweaters? Oh, I've ordered, I've ordered lots of sweaters. I've put in, I'm putting in orders for sweaters all the time. I've ordered hundreds of sweaters. But as you see, they're not here. Well, don't you have some in your warehouse? He says, oh, I've never checked the warehouse. I'm too busy putting in orders to ever see if anything has actually arrived. Well, then how do you know that you have received anything that you ordered? You see, here's the lesson, folks. We're constantly putting in these orders to God. But how rarely do we do an inventory? Gratitude is how we know that God has answered our prayers. The person who never practices gratitude in a serious way, and I mean not just a little mutter,